first thing we'll hear from is uh, John Mosaic, where he just talks about Sonny Gray and, and kind of gives you a little background on this isn't just something he picked up on. He's liked him for a long time. I think back to about Sonny Gray, and I remember back in 2011 when he was pitching at Vanderbilt, how we had a lot of interest in trying to draft him in the first round. Unfortunately, he was chosen before we got to pick and uh, ended up being drafted by Oakland. So, you know, it's kind of come full circle, and it's kind of cool. And um, there were mo- a couple times we actually tried to trade for him, too, along the way. So, so here we are. And, you know, people may ask, like, why do you sign Sonny Gray? Um, he's a competitor. He's always looking to improve. He's aggressive. He fits this ballpark perfectly. And most importantly, he wanted to be a Cardinal. So when I think back to this process, I want to thank Bo McGinnis, his agent. He was patient. Um, I tried to walk through the timeline and how we wanted to do this. Um, We were hoping to be able to sign a couple of pitchers that we knew we could count on innings for. And then if we were able to accomplish that, then we were hoping to do something a little bigger, a little longer. And obviously that's where Sonny fits I like that. Yeah, I, I, I want guys who want to be here, you know, and Sonny Gray is kind of a Cardinal type guy. He really is. That's no hyperbole from Mo. I totally buy into that. And I'm glad he's a Cardinal. I think it was an excellent signing. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, next one. This is more John or John Sonny Gray. Sorry. Giving us a little bit of the background on the process for him through his free agency with this go around. There's a couple of places that I wanted to be in St. Louis was at the forefront of that. Um, but then there is still a balance, right? You still have to um, go through the process and see kind of what presents itself. And St. Louis wasn't the first team to to reach out and 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 contact us and do this thing. We were moving along with other teams, you know, and thinking. And then you start seeing yourselves in different situations. Um, you're like, okay, yeah, that would be, you know, that's. And then you do finally get a call and you get intrigued. Um, you move down the road, and, and then once it becomes clear, um, it's it's a place you do. I, I did tell Bo that this is that that this is the place. Um, let's let's make it work. And then I don't know a lot of I don't know if a lot of free agents say this, but it's just who I am. It's just it's just just who I am. You'll get to know me. Um, I said, hey, money's not the ultimate factor. This isn't the ultimate factor. Um, being closer to home, being on a competitive winning culture, um, being in a place that you want to be, all those things definitely did matter to me. And like I said, when St. Louis called, it was it, it made this thing um, seem a lot more plausible. And then we were able to, to work through it and get it done. And I, I'm... I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. And I'm sure he had attractive options, you know. But I do believe him. And listen, the money's great. Don't get me wrong. We're not, no one's trying to like act, act like it, it, it's anything otherwise. I mean, sure. I mean, he, he got a really great contract for a 34 year old pitcher, but it was someone who's still very much in his prime. But I'm glad he wanted to be here and for for uh, to fill in some info if you you weren't aware of it. For those who weren't aware with, aware of it, no big deal. That's why we're here. Um, he's a Nashville guy. I mean, that, that's literally his hometown, and he and his wife. Uh, St. Louis and Nashville is an easy drive. I mean, it's not – needless to say, it's not far away. So it is close to home, and that matters. And I think it's a, ter- a terrific fit, Sonny Gray and the Cardinals. I do. I think it's a terrific fit. One more from Sonny talking about the, just the atmosphere of St. Louis and what he likes about coming – Becoming a Cardinal. I believe um, I did see it, um, but I, I believe I believe in the front office. I believe in the organization. I believe in the culture. Um, I believe in the fans. I believe in the city. Um, I believe in the traditions that have been created here. If you look at it, I don't think the Cardinals have had a losing season since 2007. Correct since 2007 so it's not a place that accepts losing losing is not an option it's not a place that you just say oh the cardinals are you know they're going to go through this thing it's just just doesn't happen here um so i believe in that i believe in traditions i believe in in longevity i believe in i mean you're going to not have a losing season since 2007 you've got a strong culture you've got you got an incredibly strong foundation you've got good people um i believe the winning culture is still here 
Um, it just didn't happen last year. But I, I believe it, it, it's still here and it's been here for a long time. Uh, I don't believe, I, I think that that's been damaged, but yeah, it can be, it can be uh, enhanced. It can be with, uh, I think the three pitchers they brought in can really do a lot on that end uh, as far as making sure that culture what it sh- is what it should be. I think some of it will take care of itself once the other players are probably disgruntled. Uh, see an effort being made by the front office, unlike last season, last off season on the pitching front, because everyone knew. Then, in fact, everyone's known for ye- for several years. The Cardinals were leaving themselves short on starting pitching because they failed to develop young starters the way they used to, and they weren't spending any money on them. Now, this is a start; it's not the end. I'm not saying it's perfect, but these were three good signings by John Mozeliak and Bill DeWitt. I'm not going to be petty when I think they've done something well. I'm going to say, look, they did a good job here. These were good moves. If if they uh, are complacent and they don't make moves and they leave an obvious uh, problem unattended to, then uh, you know me. I'm not going to hesitate to go full blast on them either. But uh, I like these moves a lot. and I do think that the culture can be enhanced by these three starting pitchers for reasons I discussed earlier. Gray commands a lot of respect. He's had a lengthy career. He's pitched in some different places. He's kind of a street smart guy, so to speak. Um, and he's just damn good. Uh, Lance Lynn is a, is a big bear. Uh, he can go grizzly on you. The Cardinals need some of that. I love the fact that one of the reasons he wasn't, he, he, he was not brought back as a free agent by the Cardinals after the 2017 season is he made some of the other pitchers uncomfortable. And I always thought, well, that's their problem. Because that, that place is too comfortable. You know, they had a losing seat, not a losing season, out of the playoffs in 16, out of the playoffs in 17, out of the playoffs again in 18. Everybody was nice and everybody really happy. And then they started to get mad because they didn't like Mike Matheny. There were a few holdouts on that. They needed someone to push and to bark a little bit and to like sort of push back on lazy, stupid, conventional wisdom. And I love the fact that Lance Lynn was that guy. In fact, he was so much that guy. I've told the story, and I'll do it again. When he was rehabbing uh, the year that he hurt his elbow, he had to have TJ. Whatever year that was, it doesn't matter. Matheny was the manager. And Matheny gave this big speech, basically full of it, just a crock. Listen, my door's always open. I don't, I don't care if you want to tell me that I'm wrong about something or you think that I'm missing something. I want you to come in. And, and you, you tell me whatever's on your mind. I, I don't care if I, you know, you think it might be too negative or I might get mad. I want to hear it. My door's open. So Lynn's like, oh, okay. I like that. He walked in, <laughs> walked in a day or later, said, hey, Skip, you know, uh, you, you know I, I appreciate the open door policy and you want our candor. So then he went, to, he went over a list of things he thought maybe, maybe just could be done better how he would change, change this routine or this or that, this or that. And, you know, Mike Matheny's answer was, uh, Lance, I think you should go down to Florida and, and continue your rehab work there. <laughs> I mean, that's how <laughs> damn <Doors> closed. Soft, <laughs> that is how damn soft that culture became. Wow. And some of the so-called leaders were a big part of that soft culture. And it was, a, you know, when, when you have more diaper babies down there than people that would, uh, metaphorically speaking, you know, like rip your heart out, you got a problem. You can have a couple diaper babies here and there. But, man, they lost that hardcore edge. And Lynn, when he left, it got even worse. And, yeah, they, they cycled through and they were okay. Uh, they were pretty good for there for a while. But then they got soft and... A lot, of, a lot of diaper babies this past season. They need, they need what, what Lin, Lance Lynn has. Let them make people uncomfortable. The Cardinals need it, man. And besides, besides, Kyle Gibson's personality is different than Lynn's, and that's a positive thing. They can work hand-in-hand hand on this. You got the good cop and the bad cop. And then Sonny Gray, like I mentioned earlier, he's somewhere in between. He's not going to hesitate to speak up, but he's also going to be a guy that young kids will want to go talk to. Gibson's like that, too. The Orioles loved him. Those young Orioles pitchers revered him. You think he was Jim Palmer or something, right? Yep. 
So um, this is a start in kind of trying to restore that culture. And, I, and yes, I buy into that. And there's a lot more work that needs to be done, believe me. But this is a start. It, Go ahead, James. It definitely is. Uh, I got one more from uh, Sonny Gray here that kind of talks about, he was asked by uh, Frank Cusimano, actually, where the fire to pitch comes from for him, and he describes a little bit of that. Cool. I think you're born with it. I, I do. Now having having an 8-year-old and a 5-year-old and watching them compete on a day-to-day basis, um, I think you're born with that competition and that fire. Um, but I also think it's something that, that you continue to improve. I think that's a being a competitor and, and, and having an edge and, and, and something that's that's something that you work on on a daily basis. Just the same amount of throwing a curveball, throwing a slider, throwing a fastball. It's something that that is practiced. It's something that you definitely have or you don't. But it's something that when things matter to you, winning matters to me. Pitching matters to me then the best the best part the best version of yourself just just naturally shows up um i love competing i absolutely love competing i I love taking the ball i love having that me versus the hitter i i I love i love doing that it's something that I, i genuinely love doing um and it carries throughout a staff it, it carries from one person to the next to the next and when you start putting super super intense competitors with an edge and with a fire um, and you start stacking those guys up then then you're you're putting yourself in a good position to have success yeah i mean that, that stuff's great and he means it and more than that he's lived it uh professionally because if you track sonny gray's career um he learned how to pitch at uh, the not so great American ballpark, which is basically a batting cage without the cage. Uh, you you hit a, a check swing fly ball goes for a home run. You got to be a tough minded sob to be able to pitch well in that ballpark. And he constantly made adjustments to give himself an advantage. He thought he thought that he had kind of plateaued a little bit. He said, "I got man, I need an edge. I got I got there's." some things I know I can adjust and get better. And uh, uh, he found a way to do that in Oakland. And then he just adjusted again in Minnesota and developed that sweeper slash slider and also went to the cutter more. And that became a terrific pitch for him. And uh, he found ways to reinvent himself yet again. That's a guy who wants to win. Rather than just kind of ride it out with what he has, oh, I've had a good career. I know what I'm doing. Instead of taking that attitude, he's striving to get better. And there's a lot of damn people down there that need to look to that and learn something from it. I really believe that. I like hearing that answer. I think it's good stuff. We'll got one more cut here. This is from John Mosellock as he was closing out the uh, press conference today. Just basically asked, can you ex- can the uh, fan base expect more signings ahead? Well, nothing's really changed in the sense that we, we certainly feel like we've accomplished something for our rotation. Now I think uh, we, we really need to sort of look at what trade options there might be out there and how we can maybe arbitrage that to improve the club. So, you know, like, like I said, today's a great day for us. We feel really good about what's happened over the last 10 days. Um, but we also know there's still two months left in the off season, and what we really want to do is just not close any doors, not um, recognize or, or acknowledge there could be other opportunities, and so that's really what we want to uh, approach the next um, two months as. So, you know, what might happen next week in, in winter meetings is still TBD, but you know, we certainly feel a lot better about our club today than we did uh, two months ago. And I wouldn't overreact to that. They should feel better about their club today because, again, innings matter. Innings are hugely important. And if you look at the Cardinals last year, um, what they had to do to even put a rotation together with all the bad performances, all the skimpy innings, all of, all of the guys that couldn't get through, uh, you know, the first couple, three innings of a game without giving up multiple runs. You had the injuries. You had this. You had that. And as I, as I talked about with uh, Dane Perry, you know, the one thing that we need to look at, and you say, well, why does he feel better about his club? You know, well, he should feel better about his club. That doesn't mean he shouldn't do more. In fact, if they don't do more, I'm going to be pretty ticked off, and you'll hear me roar, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, they, should, they should feel better about what – they f- should feel good about what they've done. Key words here, so far. 
But part of this, and I got to find this, and uh, apologize for you know me looking for my millions of notes. If you look at um, what they had in that rotation last year, and some of the some of the innings that went to people that just were frankly really terrible and Adam Wainwright's in a different category it wasn't his fault stayed too long and it just had a had a rough rough year but w- one of the most important things about this is that um, it, it's not so much what they'll do but it's um, what what these new starters will do it's a fact that um, they the, you have to look at the guys who won't be pitching for the Cardinals in 2024 guys in that rotation that were trying their best but it just wasn't meant to be if you look at let me find it i'm sorry if you look at um here's who i'm talking about if you look at wainwright and you look at flaherty and you look at dakota hudson you look at jake woodford you look at drew rom and you can put matthew libitor on that list um those one, two, three, four, five, six starting pitchers, um, you, you know, worked worked uh, over six hundred innings, uh, over six hundred innings, and had an ERA of like six oh four uh, as a group. Oh, yeah. I mean, they made a bunch of starts. I think they made eighty starts. That's like half the season. Those guys I just mentioned gave the Cardinals eighty starts. And about uh, about 300, almost 400 innings, and they pitched to a 6.04 ERA. So you can in, you can evaluate the three new guys independently of that. I think that's dumb to do that because it isn't just that they're here. It's a ma- it's a big question or a big big important matter of who no longer will be pitching for the Cardinals in that rotation in 2024. Maybe there's a chance Libertor will, but I hope they. They, they go with him in the bullpen as a high leverage, leverage reliever. So how can you not feel better when you have, like, like turned a corner and, you know, uh, uh, cut ties with some guys that you had to have? They didn't cut ties with Rom, but he ain't going to be in the rotation this year, coming up next year. But you, you, uh, you cut, you, you know, you're moving on from people that just were a liability in the rotation last year. You know, and now you're bringing in guys who had nothing else. Gray's really, really good. But um, Gibson's better than uh, most Cardinals fans realize. He tr- really, truly is. And I think Lynn is going to at least uh, normalize that home run rate to the point where he'll be a better pitcher. How better? We, listen, all you can do is wait and see. you got no answers today. Um, and you hope that Michaelis can figure out a few things. But they're in a better spot right now, but they can't rest. I don't want to see any victory laps. I still think they need more in that rotation. I know they need more depth to that rotation. And they got to get to work on just making this bullpen more fearsome because they're, they're banking on guys that can be fool's gold, and that concerns me. And that's the, one of the Cardinals' worst habits, as I've, we've all talked about. They have this tendency, it's a shame, to overrate their own people and overestimate what they can do. They can't fall into that mindset trap again because they have been – damaged by that over and over and over again and you just say look when will they learn well at least they've learned they need to have guys who can be depended on and counted on to start and to give them a lot of innings and that's a really important thing despite what people may think to have that bottom of the rotation layered with all of this innings firepower really really big deal and as far as um as far as gray himself and I know I got to get going here in a couple of minutes. Just a reminder why I'm so up on him. I don't understand why anybody would not be fired up about him. Uh, number two in the American League Cy Young voting last year to Garrett Cole had the best fielding independent ERA among all major league starting pitchers last year. He had the third best standard ERA, third best in all of Major League Baseball to Snell and Garrett Cole. He had the lowest home run, run uh, the lowest home run rate allowed in Major League Baseball by a starting pitcher. He allowed the second lowest slugging percentage by a Major League starter. He had 5.3 wins above replacement, which was tied for third among all Major League starters. Only Zach Wheeler and Spencer Strider had more. 
among innings qualified starters in 2023. Gray had more wins above replacement than Garrett Cole, Logan Webb, Zach Galen, Aaron Nola, Blake Snell, Justin Steele, Corbin Birds, Merrill Kelly, uh, Luis Castillo, Jordan Montgomery, Dylan Cease, Pablo Lopez, George Kirby, Framber Valdez, Lucas Giolito, Chris Bassett, and many others. And he was third among Major League starters in win probability added. Uh, only Cole and Snell did better. Uh, he was up there in the leaderboard, top 20, top 25 in innings and strikeout rate and quality start. And do I really need to keep having to make a case to tell you why a guy's really an outstanding get for the Cardinals? I mean, if that doesn't convince you, I, I really don't know what to tell you because you're not even trying to open your mind. You've made up your mind. Whatever Mosaic does is garbage. Everything he touches is awful. Oh, they fail. You know, no, 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 no. I got to be fair. Uh, these were good moves, and the gray move was the topper. I just hope there's more behind it. Um, I hope there's a lot more behind it, and that bullpen has got to be a priority going forward. 